Here are five mistakes to avoid when using DaVinci Resolve. Let's go. So for example, you just got home from filming, you just dumped your cards onto your hard drive, and instead of just dragging them here into your timeline or into your media pool, what you'll wanna do is click on the media tab, find the folder on your hard drive where you imported all the footage from your cameras. And this is really beneficial when you have footage from different types of cameras. What you'll wanna do is right click on that folder and then select add folder and subfolders into media pool, create bins. Now, when you come over to your edit tab, instead of having all of these clips separated out from all different cameras, you have it organized here on the left. So now I have my GoPro footage and then I have my Sony a7S III footage. So now that leads me on to my next mistake to avoid. So some of us have the render cache turned on to smart. So our project is rendering as we're editing, which takes up hard drive space. So what you'll want to do while you're editing is come up here to the delete render cache and select unused just once in a while. And then when you're actually done with the project, you can select all and you free up all that hard drive space that this render cache has been taking up while you've been editing your projects. Now, this next mistake is kind of a personal thing, but for me, say for example, if I drag an effect on a clip and then it does its thing, you can make fine tune adjustments like so. But if I were to take that off the clip, go into my color tab, and then under the open effects, add that same exact thing, I can look at my waveform and adjust accordingly on how this effect is actually affecting the entire clip. If you don't care, and that's your creative choice of doing so, so be it. But just something to keep in mind when adding effects in the edit tab. And that leads me on to my next mistake that some of you may do, which is if you come down here to an audio clip and you make an adjustment with the EQ. So for example, if you come and do something like this, and then you go into the Fairlight tab, and you do the exact same thing with an EQ, you may be doubling up on what you've been trying to do, or you may even be trying to counter the EQ effects or audio effects that you've been doing in the previous edit tab. So if you're boosting or pulling away frequencies in the edit tab, and you try to do that same thing here, just make sure and be conscious of it that you're not doing it and duplicating the effects that you've been doing on the edit tab. So the next mistake you want to avoid is not delivering for the proper audience. Now I'm gonna put some articles in the description down below for mixed media delivery. So do me a favor, read that content. It's all super situational. So I just wanna make sure that you guys get the most out of this and then you can make your own personalized decisions on what is going to work best for you. Next, what you wanna make sure to do is come over here to your color tab. And when you're doing saturation, you wanna have your vector scope open. And when you look at these boxes, the red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta, these inner boxes, I have also outer boxes. Pretend there's an imaginary line going between all of those. And when you saturate your image or add some contrast, which essentially kind of adds saturation as well, you wanna make sure you do not go outside of that imaginary line, because if you do, your image will look like crap. So don't do that. Also make sure in your vector scope settings, turn on the skin tone indicator. And that leads me on to my next video that if you guys wanna get perfect skin tones, check out this video right here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.